Good morning, church. Please stand and worship with us. announcements for this morning. The first is that Aldersgate Church has been connected with Jackson School for some time now through donating time and resources to the students of the school. Robin Hoffman is starting a new program at the school and would like your help in getting it off the ground. The program is called the Virtual Read Aloud Program and gives you the opportunity to read a book chosen by the school to a classroom. The tech team here at Aldersgate will be assisting with the recording process, and we want you to consider now if you'd like to get involved. There is a half sheet with more information that you can pick up on your way out today. September 19th, mark that date on your calendars because that is Back to Church Sunday. The last year and a half has seen a lot of separation and limited opportunities for full fellowship. So on September 19th, from 11.30 to 1.30, we will be having an outdoor festival. This will include a petting zoo, a bounce house, and most importantly, food. Invite your friends, your neighbors, your neighbor's friends, everybody for a fun-filled time together. 
um, the 19th is also the date that we will be restarting Children's Sunday School. So more details are to come about that. All right, let's continue in worship. So now that you're sitting all comfy in your chairs, let's stand back up and continue singing together. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. to us, creating a relationship with us in Christ in which honesty about our sin is welcome and safe. Today, our prayer is a call and response. The response is simple. It's heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. Please join me in prayer as we highlight God's love seen in Jesus. For the times we have lied to one another and the times we have been lied to, heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. For the times we have laughed at another's pain and the times we have been laughed at. Heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. For the times we have spoken when we should have remained silent and the times we have remained silent when we should have spoken. Heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. For the times we have let our differences divide us. Heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. For the times we have betrayed a friend and the times we have been betrayed. Heal us, Jesus, Savior of the world. O God of heaven and earth, you emptied yourself of your power and became one of us in order that you might heal the world. 
Teach us to empty ourselves of the things that destroy us and keep us alone. Empty us of our jealousy, our meanness, our fear of others. For Jesus' sake, amen. So, hear the good news from 2 Corinthians. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that in Jesus, God embraces you, forgives you, and strengthens you to live a renewed life. Thanks be to God. And since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. Take a moment now to pass the peace of Christ to your neighbor. All right, it's hoppy time. Hoppy time. Have fun. I love that shaker. <laughs> That's awesome. Hoppity hip. <laughs> okay, a few weeks ago, Matt introduced us to a new modern hymn called Jesus Strong and Kind. The lyrics of this hymn remind us that when we are thirsty, Jesus satisfies. When we are weak, Jesus is our strength, and when we are afraid, Jesus is our comfort. In Luke 19, Jesus has an interaction with Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and Zacchaeus' life is transformed at Jesus' display of love and welcome. Then Zacchaeus says this to Jesus, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus strong and kind reminds us that if we are lost, Jesus will come to us. So let's sing together. Yeah. 
And I'd like to invite Jim Clark to now come up to, to speak. Good morning, Aldersgate. I am happy to be here, and it's really, really nice to be among you and see so many of you here. I'm not normally a, um, I should say I am normally a very private person on certain personal matters, but I feel the current life circumstances combined with scripture readings in recent weeks was God speaking to me, and I wanted to share this moment of faith. To say it's been a challenging health year in the Clark household would be an understatement. As many of you know, my wife Linda has been dealing with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer for about two years, and in February of this year, she excitedly obtained her two COVID shots only to be told by her oncologist two weeks later that they did not take since the rituxan medicine that she takes to build up her immune system basically wiped out the COVID antibodies. After a long six-month wait, she tried again in early August, only to be rejected by Wellspan, who said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Clark, you already had your two COVID shots, and you're not entitled to any more. Um, for the past year and a half, Linda and I, especially Linda, have been confined to quarters, not venturing out, not socializing like the rest of you with group gatherings, parties, sports events, going out to dinner, church, and so forth. I have one older sibling, a sister who is a widow who lives 30 miles north of Pittsburgh. She deals with multiple health issues, and including the diagnosis this summer of stage four kidney failure. And stage five, I am told, is when you start the dialysis. So the elements of stress, anxiety, as well as emotional and mental well-being were evident in our household. And for those of you who know me, that was even a challenge to my normal sense of humor. To add to those challenges, I unexpectedly became a member of an exclusive club this year. It's one of those for men only clubs. Never in my wildest dreams but I have thought about being a member of such a club. Now, to say I joined the club would imply that I did it voluntarily. I was forced into joining it. It's comprised of men from all over York County, from all walks of life. We even have our own clubhouse. Some of us meet every morning at our clubhouse to swap stories and, you know, talk guy things. Here's a picture of our clubhouse. In case you can't see the words above the, uh, above the door, they say, Wellspan York Cancer Center. In April of this year, I was officially diagnosed with prostate cancer. In May and June, I went through a battery of tests and two surgical procedures, and that was just in preparation for my radiation treatments, which began July 1st. As of today, I have completed 42 treatments, one every morning, with the final two, hopefully, tomorrow and Tuesday. I will be monitored for the next five years by my radiation oncologist. Then and only then, if all has gone well, I will get the club status of cancer-free. They had warned me going into this process about the side effects of my radiation treatments. Let me tell you, I grossly underestimated them. Linda and I are grateful for many things. Knowing God and having him on our side, excellent doctors and medical teams to take care of us, Medicare and a good supplemental insurance plan. Um, and and one, of the, one of the actual good side effects, which even the doctors couldn't have predicted, is that Linda and I have never been closer in our 44 years of marriage than we are now. So 44 radiation treatments for me, 44 years of marriage for us. I, instead of being angry over my situation or cynical or withdrawing, I have found myself thanking God for all the good things I have going on in my life. I don't think that happens without faith. 
On a thankful note for Linda and her situation, the week after she was told that she could not get any more COVID shots, the FDA approved that third additional COVID shot for people with organ transplants, cancer, and autoimmune diseases. Linda rushed in to get hers. Uh, we'll find out in about three weeks if this COVID shot took. Linda and I would welcome the opportunity to talk with you about our health stories if you feel the need to. And I'm certain there are many other people here in our church that would do the same for you. Let me emphasize that it's been our faith that is getting us through this year. Perhaps you or your family have recently gone through some adversity or are currently going through one, or perhaps it is yet to appear, whether it be financial, a job, relationships, or a death in a family. As we enter the fall of 2021, I hope you will find a way to renew your faith and maybe you too will find yourself making a list of all the things for which you are grateful. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your, heart, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A couple weeks ago, we talked about how God rescues his people, and we said, you know, sometimes God will rescue us, Jim, out of a situation, and then sometimes God will rescue us through a situation, but always God rescues from condemnation that we would be saved and born again. Jim, you and your wife are being rescued through your situation, like Apostle Paul himself Who's, who prayed many times that God would heal him and didn't find recovery, he says, I am grateful for God's grace is sufficient for me, that in my weakness, I've discovered strength. And that's what I heard from you. You said that you and your wife are closer to each other and closer to God and greater with him and he within you through this situation. Give God a hand. Because I know there's other people out here dealing with cancer, other people out here dealing with loneliness, a lot of people dealing with brokenness, a lot of us are dealing with the grief and the brokenness of this world, of all those people who died in Afghanistan. It shouldn't have happened. Christians who are being persecuted in Afghanistan, as well as in many other countries, in most countries around the world, in case we didn't know that, long, as well as students going back to school, and some are being overwhelmed with the newness of their surroundings. I mean, there's a lot of brokenness, and if you're dealing dealing with any type of cancer. I'm going to say any type, Jim, whether it be a prostate or whether it be something else, uh, that turn to Jim and Linda. Now, obviously, you have to keep a social distance because they're very vulnerable in their health, but give them a call. They will give you encouragement. They can tell you how they're going through this and how they're going through this successfully because greater is he, that means Jesus, in them than their own flesh. Amen. Amen. See, we got a new amen corner over here. It's called Jim Clark Amen Corner. God, we thank you so much for the victory that Jim and Linda are experiencing in the midst of this calamity and sickness. We know that Linda is live streaming or will be live streaming later, Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that she knows how grateful we are of her testimony here today. Lord, we are not defeated, Lord. We are not discouraged by the world because we know, Lord, that light is brighter than darkness. Your word is more truth than all the lies that are around us. You are the rock of our life. You are the firm foundation. You're the anchor that holds our ship from sailing adrift, Lord, to out to the seas. You are holy. You are the holy of holies. You are the great of the greatness. You are the majestic God over the universe. You created us in your image, and then you breathed your breath into us that we would know you within us, not just merely around us. So, Lord, today we thank you for that comfort of hope that we have. We pray that you give it to the people in Haiti, Lord, who have lost their homes, who have lost their children, who have lost their parents, Parents who have lost their spouses, who have lost, Lord, their jobs. Lord, we pray for a renewalness of hope in this country and for the continuing of all the, the support that's coming in 
through uh, around the world as well as through uh, Amcor, the United Methodist Relief Program. Lord, we just pray for these people, and Lord, we pray for those Christians and residents, the Afghans, Lord, who are hiding in their homes, fearing for their lives, Lord, that their lives would be taken. Lord, give them strength. Give them peace. Let them know that you have not forsaken them, that you are there with them, Lord, and that Christians around the world and Christians in free countries and free churches like ours are really concerned and really humbled before you and crying out to you on their behalf, Lord. Spare their lives. Spare them, Lord, we pray. We just pray for them. Lord, we pray for those who are listening today and those who are here who are dealing with addiction, maybe addiction to self-denial or maybe self-dying, self-condemnation. Some people are addicted to always saying bad things to themselves. It's almost like a a drug habit. It's like an alcohol habit. It's like a gambling habit. We know it's destructive. We know it's evil, but we can't help ourselves unless you come and rescue us and transform our hearts and open up our minds, Lord, and do a little uh, surgery, spiritual surgery within us, Lord. We are defeated. But, Lord, with you, we all can recover by the goodness and the greatness that you are. And that's what we pray for. Lord, we pray for our, our uh, young children who went back to school this week or maybe the week before or the week to follow. And we pray for uh, older children as well and college kids, Lord. Uh, we have so many, Lord. We just pray that you put a hedge of protection around them. Lord, not just physically. You know, we, we, most of that is provided by this country that we're so grateful for. But, Lord, spiritually, because there's a lot of false doctrine. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, Lord, peer pressure to believe in things that are not of your word, that are twisted. They sound good, but they're twisted. Lord, young lives are falling left and right, being consumed of the world instead of, a, of your word. So we pray, Lord, for your protection, Lord. Help them to be strong. Help them to be steadfast. Help them to to live a life that is honorable to you. It may not be a physical persecution, but it certainly is a spiritual one. Also help us as parents and grandparents who also have that same impact of our culture and our society that's trying to get us, Lord, to to think differently in ways that it's not even clear, in ways, Lord, that goes beyond understanding. Uh, And, Lord, we just just come to you. We're not people of judgment. We're people of compassion. We love all people, Lord, all around the world. We don't care what color. We don't care what language. We don't even care what sex preference. Lord, we don't care what their gender gender is or what their gender wants to be we love all people we love all people or we know we are called to love you and with that love that you have given to us we're called to love all people so help us lord never ever be people of condemnation whether we like them or not whether they're like us or not lord help us to be more love we pray lord now this is really hard god and unless christ is within us i'm going to tell you god it's not going to happen We love our enemies, the Taliban's, those who are killing innocent lives, we're called to love. Lord, how are we supposed to do that unless you and your spirit's within us? And I know, Lord, there's some of us here in this church because they're everywhere where people will say, I will never forgive that person. Shame on us, Lord. No, not shame on us. But, Lord, may we ask for your forgiveness that we have enough to give to those. Lord, help us never to say that. You never said that. Jesus didn't say that. He said, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. So help us to be that way, Lord. We are people of forgiveness. Even when we are mocked, even when we are insulted and embarrassed, even when we are belittled. In fact, Lord, not even when but especially then, for that shows the light that's brighter. Thank you, God, for Aldersgate Church that shines the light, that shines the truth, that shines the love, that shares uh, your good things. Be with us this morning as we seek for your word that we would be true in Jesus. And God's people say, amen. Thank you. Scripture reading, 
from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 7. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiven, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. And continuing on in verse 10. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured? Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from who you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Soji and Vanessa and the praise band for the wonderful sounds of music and the worshiping opportunity that we have today to open up the courts of praise. Thank you, Soji and Vanessa, for reading the word of God that we would know the truth. And the truth shall set us free. I'd like to start out with a little simple exercise, okay? Are you ready? This will require you to think a little bit. I know it's still early in the morning. Maybe you don't like to think. You just want to vegetate. But this is not the time to do that, okay? I don't want you to vegetate because what I have to share is very vital to the, your life and to your future. But anyways, let's do a, a little brief exercise. What would you say are some of the most important books in your house? Now, before you jump in to say the Bible, I, I want you to be thinking about other books. Just think about maybe three or four books in your head. Do you have them yet? One, two, three, four. You can talk to your spouse, your children. What are the most important books in your house? The books that are essential. Well, here are some of the, some of the books that I'm thinking are very e essential in, in most homes. Uh, I would like to think the cookbook is very, very essential. Amen? Amen? All right. Especially if you don't know how to cook, Please read the cookbook. I know some of you guys are natural. But what other book? Well, I'll tell you what. If you're not a good cook, you might want to have a first aid book, right? Okay, in case you get sick and your recipe didn't work, right? It's always good to have a first aid book. So if something happens in your family, you can go to that book and, and, and take care of whatever the, uh, the emergency situation may be. Uh, what other books can you possibly think of in your family that might be essential well, this book, if you don't take care of it, it will crush your life. It's called your financial books. Now, it used to be back in the old days that everybody had checkbooks. So I was going to say, well, you could say checkbook, but people would say, what's that? Well, it's a checkbook. Well, just so, you know, just so you're not insulted, I still, my wife still uses the checkbook. I don't, but she does. And I'm okay with that. But your financial books is pretty essential, right? Your, your financial uh, uh, portfolio, you, you need to take care of that. You need to have a budget, right? And if you don't, you ought to be thinking about it. Otherwise, one of these days you'll wake up and you'll wonder why you didn't do it, okay? What other books are you thinking about in, in your life? Well, some of you... Uh, uh, maybe who don't Google that much. Of course, I think everybody Googles today. Everybody does the Google thing, right? But before Google days, there was this book that was essential in everybody's house. It was called the dictionary. Remember the dictionary? There was actually a book, you know, about this thick. 
that would tell you how to spell and what the word means. Of course, you don't need that anymore because you can go to another kind of book. And you say, what book is that? Oh, Dale, it's the notebook, Microsoft Notebook, right? You could go to that. So all these books are, you know, essential or vital in different aspects of our lives. Now, the two most vital books in my household are two children's books, especially when the grandkids come. In fact, only when the grandkids come. The one book is called, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. That book is essential in my house. When my grandkids come over, they want Grandma, Mimi is her name, and, and Grandpa to read that book. And if that book isn't found, then we have to find this other very important book book that's called Pizza Pat. That's a fun book. And if I don't have, if we don't have those two essential books in our house, uh, you know, our grandkids could be very, very sad, right? Of course, now we all know the Bible. I remember many years ago, someone came to my house after we talked about the Bible, and they said, Dale, do you know what the, the, the letters of Bible mean, B-I-B-L-E? I said, no, what do they mean? And this man said, basic instructions before leaving earth. Interesting. The Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. This book was given to me 43 years ago, and it has been the most essential book in all the years that I have lived since, and it's still the main book, the source of life and direction and guidance for ministry, for being a Christian, for being a father, for being a husband, for being a good neighbor. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, you can speak up. I am okay with that, especially if you're live streaming. Shout it to the, to the mountaintop, if you will. Last week, Jeff Coons was teaching on how to discern uh, God's voice. And if you hadn't heard it, you might want to go back and listen to it. It was very, very good. He said basically three things. He said, if you want to discern God's voice, if you think God is talking to you, how do you know it's God and, and not something else? Well, number one, he said, the Bible. Does it, does it agree with the Bible? Number two, he says, prayer. And number three, listening. All right? So... I'm going to say something to you here. You can do all the praying you want. You could do all the listening you want until the cow jumps over the moon. And if you don't read the word of God, you're going to derail and go down a detour uh, that you'll regret later on. Let's look at Timothy 2. During one of the worst times in history when Christians were being martyred simply because they just believed in Jesus Christ, Apostle Paul was in Rome in prison. And in prison, being persecuted himself, he is telling his apprentice that the last days, the difficult days are, are upon them and that he needed to be prepared. And so he tells Timothy in 2 Timothy um, in the first two chapters, and I'm not going to go over it extensively, but he basically tells Tim, he says, Tim, I'm in prison. I'm going through a rough time, but don't worry about me. I just want you to hang in there, and here's what I want you to do when you're going through the last days, when you're going through a difficult time, when you're having a rough time. He says, number one, take courage. Two, be faithful. Three, don't get distracted by the current issues and affairs around the world. He says, be humble. He says, be holy, and he says, hold on to the sound doctrines that have been entrusted to you. And then in chapter 3, which was read by um, Soji and, and Vanessa, it says here that, that uh, the last days are upon us. And, and, and a lot of people say, well, yeah, Pastor Joe, it's really upon us now. If they think the last days was back then. Man, these are definitely the last days, just by the current news in the last two, three weeks. But I want us to understand something here, because a lot of times when, when we read the Bible, we read it from our own context, and maybe not the context of the scripture or the original language. When it says the last days, it doesn't mean the last week, the last month, or the last decade, or even the last century. It means the last phase of life, the last phase of the church. What is the last phase of the church? It's from the resurrection, ascension of Christ, till he comes again. 
So we are in that last time. We are in the last days. We've been in it for 2,000 years. And in our country, is it getting worse? Probably. Uh, is it worse around the world? Not really. Some places it's better. Some places it's worse. But we are all, no matter where we're at around the globe, we are in this stage before Christ comes again. And, and Paul is telling Timothy, you know, don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid. Don't be surprised. The last days, the difficult times are here, just during the time of Paul being persecuted. And by the way, Paul was beheaded shortly after he wrote this. That's what history records. And in fact, just three or four years after this letter, all of Jerusalem city was demolished. The temple was torn down, and Christians were massacred. They were killed only because they believed in Jesus Christ not because they were disobeying the laws of the land. So here we have it. Um, the time of persecution was, uh, the, it was the time that Paul was writing this. Um, I think sometimes as, as Christians here in America, we forget that many of the Christians around the world are dying for their faith, literally dying for their faith. Maybe we don't want to think about it. Maybe it's because it, it scares us. Maybe we're in denial. But the reality is, Many Christians are being persecuted. Did you know that since the time this letter was written, 70 million Christians have been martyred? 70 million Christians, and probably it's much higher than that because this inf information is about three or four years old. Christians who had difficult times. China, India, North Korea, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and now we're hearing all this news from Afghanistan. 260 million Christians are currently suffering on a scale from high to a, to a level of severe of persecution. Let the truth be known, folks. I know that here in America, we have been very blessed to live in the land of security, a land of peace for the most part, right? And, and, for, and, and we're grateful that we've been able to, to read our Bibles and we're able to worship today and not have to worry about our lives our families, someone knocking in our door at midnight. We don't have to worry about that, right? But much of the world does and has. So in these difficult times, as even in our own life, and, and as we're more in tune with the news, we need to respond just as Timothy needed to respond to Paul. We need to respond to Paul as well because he gives us good advice and guidance. You could say, you know, Dale, I don't like this. I, I, I didn't sign up to be a Christian to be persecuted. I think I'll just hit the high country and be a hermit. And some people, that's what they do. Some people uh, bury their heads in the sand and say, nah, 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 and just pretend they don't hear it, right? They just turn off. I mean, if you don't like something, you don't like someone, you just turn them off, right? That's what spouses do to each other sometimes. Shame, 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 right? No, we shouldn't do that. But we just turn it off. Or sometimes we become really anxious. And to numb that anxiousness, you know what we do? When we drink ourselves to death or we take drugs, whether it's medicated uh, or, or whether it's illegal. Or, or, you know, a lot of Christians, what we'll do, uh, we do what the rest of the world does when they have the opportunity. We just saturate ourselves with worldly pleasures. As long as we're having fun, we don't have to worry about, you know, the rest of the uh, calamities around the world or you know here's what some christians will do and you see this happening you just compromise just change what you believe right if times get tough and 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 everybody else thinks or feels a certain way just say you agree with them yeah i i believe there's five ways to to god i i don't believe jesus is the only way you're right i'm wrong that's okay now you can love me and i love you and everything peace right <laughs> paul doesn't say that he says, take courage, be faithful, don't get, don't get caught up in these other affairs, be humble, and so on. And then in chapter 3, Paul and Soji, where are you? Oh, you're in the back. I think I heard you coughing. By the way, God bless you. Any, anyways, um, anyways, he read the scripture so well. I, I, you know, I just love when, when people read the scripture and they read it from their hearts as, as he did. But here's Paul saying, the world is going mad. Evil is running rampant, right? We'll become wrong. Wrong. 
will become right. Corruption will be massive. Correction <laughs> is minimum. People will betray their own kind, their own families, their own friends. Gossip will be greater than the gospel. Posers will pretend to be godly but have no form of godliness within them. Instead of gratitude, there's greed. Instead of humility, there's pride. Instead of loving God, love self. Instead of helping the vulnerable, let's take advantage of them. <laughs> Paul writes in 2 Timothy 3, 12 to 13, says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, he says, everyone who wants to live a life uh, for Jesus, a godly life for Jesus, he says it very clear. He says, will be, will be persecuted. While evil do doers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Paul says to Timothy, hold on, hold on. In this following scripture, he says, Paul, now you know how the world's getting darker. I want to I want to show you how you can be brighter. First of all, he says, hold on to the teachings that you received when you were a child. From your grandmother, we find now, is, um, uh, what was her name? Lois. And from your mother, Eunice. As these two women have taught you young in your life, hold on to those teachings. Hold on to those sound doctrines. Hold on to what teachings I, says Paul, has given to you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on to the Bible. Hold on to the Word of God. Hold on to the life that God has given to us through His Word. You say, why? Why hold on to this? Why not just tuck this away and take it off the coffee table and shove it underneath something so your guests don't see it? Let me tell you why. Because all Scripture... All scripture from Genesis to Revelation ordained, which means blessed, means stamp of approval by the church, by you, by me. No, by God, the creator of the universe, the creator of you and me, the one who breathes his life, the one, his, his life into us, the one who redeems us, that we would have life abundantly, eternal life. It, God is the author of the Bible. Hold on to the scripture. Why? Paul says, because it's beneficial. He says the word profitable. I didn't want to use that because right away Americans think money. But it's beneficial. For what? How is this beneficial? I want to know. If, if I'm going to take the time out to read this Bible that has 66 books in it, why should I do it? Well, it teaches the truth of God. That's what Paul says to Tim. It identifies what is harmful to us, how to avoid uh, dead ends, how to avoid potholes, how to avoid accidents, right? Uh, it's for correcting. It will correct us. Uh, of our ill habits, our ill thoughts, our ill attitudes. And I throw attitudes in there because that's one thing that a lot of Christians deal with is ill attitudes. Man, they need to read the fruits of the Spirit. They need to read Philippians too, right? Those grumpy old people are grumpy. By the way, when I say grumpy old people, here, uh, let me put that in context. You're never old. Listen to this. You're never old until you become grumpy. So if you're three years old and you're grumpy, you're old. Old man, old nature, old stuff. And the Bible talks about that old person and talks about the new person. And when we become a new person, we don't become grumpy. We become grateful. <laughs> Why? Because we receive so much more than what we earn and deserve. You can't help being grateful when you receive so much. And you didn't earn it. The Bible's for training a person to live a life that's honorable to God. And let me just say, not only is it honorable to God, but it's fulfilling. It's satisfying to the soul. Our cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. My cup runneth over. I can't help it. You ever meet somebody who's just gushing over for God? I saw them up here on the stage. I see them all the time. 
I love being with them. They have a great influence on me, and I hope I have on them. Why hold on to the Scriptures? Because the Scriptures are thoroughly written to us to equip us. It says in Scripture, if we believe in Scripture, for every, the word is every good work. When I was in seminary, and Pastor Dale, I know we were in the same, uh, I don't think we were in the same classes, but we were in the same school. And, and, and I know one of the habits that I had as a seminarian is I was reading all about the Bible. I'm reading all about church growth. I'm reading all about theology and philosophy. I'm reading about how to do a worship and how not to run overtime. I didn't learn too well in that class. I failed that one. Um, but anyways, um, but, but you read all about the Bible and then you don't read the Bible. I just couldn't wait to get out of seminary because I just wanted to read the Bible because it has everything in it for the good work that God has called us to. Scripture in of itself, even without other sources, is sufficient in teaching us how to live a glorious life. That's what Paul is saying to Timothy. Not that these supplements, not that these additives, not that, not that the... Uh, you know, commentaries and other books that we use are any good. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they are not the primary source. They are not the entree. They may be the appetizer and they may be the dessert, but this is the entree. This is the meat. This, well, if you're not a meat eater, this is your vegetables. Yeah, candy's good. Yeah. Appetizers are wonderful. There's no resource more comprehensive, more practical, more beneficial, more therapeutic, more theological, more revealing of God's identity than the B-I-B-L-E. Guess how many copies have been sold? This is the number one seller. It still remains to be the number one seller. I kind of wonder if it's the number one that's read. I'm not sure. I know it's the number one seller. I have five or six of these in my office. I know I don't read all of them. Um, you know, I read one of them, and that's mostly this one. Five billion copies. It's no wonder that the Bible is the best-selling book. So let me ask you a question. These are difficult times. I don't care who you are, where you're at. I don't care how secure you are with your retirement plan or with your double income or single income or with whatever income, how secure you are with the house and the home you live in, how secure you are living here in your county or living in Pennsylvania or the United States, how secure we are uh, in, in, in our health, thinking, well, you know, I'll never have prostate cancer. I know because I'm just healthy and I got good genes and my parents never had cancer. So I, no matter what, we're going through difficult times. So don't you, don't you want a little light in the darkness? Don't, don't, don't you want to walk in the direction that will keep you from stumbling? Do you long to know the truth in, uh, <clears throat> in a world of false doctrines and twisted? Everybody's telling us different things. You know, everybody. Everybody's telling. We're hearing all these voices. You can hear all the voices around the world with Google. And, and you hear all these voices, and you're wanting, and you stop, stop. I just want to know the truth. I don't want all this stuff anymore. I'm done. Then you're ready. This isn't a supplement. This is a survival and a thriving kit in one. Do you want to live a life honorable to God? and delightful to your soul. You can read all the books in the library. You can have a PhD in philosophy, and you can have the IQ of Einstein. But unless you read the only book ordained by God, you are not thoroughly, I say you are not thoroughly, you might be partially, but you are not thoroughly equipped. You're not ready to live life in the last days. You can't go through the last days without this book. Please don't try. You're going to fail. Maybe a little, but mostly a lot. I love the scripture, and you do too. For God, help me out. Let's do this together. For God so loved the world. 360. For God so loved the world 
that he gave us his only begotten son. So whomever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I have a saying, um, and I call it Bible 316, and it comes from the Dale Parker version that says, For God so loved his children that he gave us the Bible so that whoever reads it will be fully equipped to live a glorious life in a world of darkness. <laughs> Can you, let me ask you, answer these questions in your heads. Can you fly an airplane without aviation training? Maybe, but I'm not going to ride with you. All right, I'm just going to tell you that right now. Can you bake a cake? without a recipe yes probably I'm not going to eat it though can you go spelunking in a dark cave hundreds of feet underneath the earth without a flashlight yes but I'm not going to follow you you're not going to be my guide can you be a Christian without reading the Bible yes but I'm going to challenge you why well why learn things the hard way why? Why wait for an accident to happen before changing your course? Why? Why wait until you are sick before you discover what is healthy? Why wait until you're lost in darkness to realize you needed the light? Why waste your time working without being fully equipped with the tools that God has given to us? I mean, I try to think of a carpenter who, who builds a house without tools. I try, to, I try to think a mechanic who, who works in your cars and, and, and doesn't have wrenches and sockets, right? Hopefully it doesn't matter if he has a hammer. We don't want mechanics with a hammer. I, I, I would want a doctor who doesn't have these medical tools, right? I want, a, I want a doctor. I want a mechanic. I want a carpenter who's fully equipped. And that's what God says. I want my people. I want my people. I want you. I want you to be fully equipped. I don't want you to be caught off guard. I don't want you to be surprised. I don't want you to be a, a vulnerable lamb that just takes a beating. I don't want that for my people. Jesus Christ is the manifestation of God. The Bible is the same. Jesus is the living word. The Bible is is the written word. Both are manifestations of God that we would know the truth and the truth would set us free. So, I, I don't want people to feel uh, ashamed if you're not reading your Bible. You don't want to read your Bible? Don't read your Bible. That's, that's totally up to you. It's just like people who cook or you know, people who build things and don't read books, that's okay. Um, I'm kind of curious how it's working for you, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, seriously. But I, well, the next step to this message is to be thinking about your reading habits of God's Word. And by the way, when you read the Word of God, let the Word of God read you. Don't read the Bible like you're trying to dissect it, trying to figure it all out. Let it figure you out. The Bible wasn't for us to shape it was for the Bible to shape us. And you say, I don't understand that. It's okay, you read on. But make it a common habit, a common uh, uh, routine in your schedule. It might be in the morning, it might be in the evening. By the way, there are Bible apps out there, wonderful Bible apps. You don't necessarily have to carry a big Bible like this one that was given to me 43 years ago when I started ministry. But you can just, just have, you know, holding on to some, some scriptures in your life and during your day. Uh, parents and grandparents, please read the Bible. Please read the Bible. If you don't read the Bible to your children, they're not going to read it on their own when they get older. I'm just, it's just the way it is. One of my most favorable times, and boy, I'm glad I didn't miss the boat. I almost missed the boat. I'm glad I did. I was busy. I'm trying to build up, you know, church and trying to build up my life and trying to be somebody. And, and it's, you get caught up and you forget your own kids. But one of the things that I'm grateful for uh, was I would spend, not every night, but a lot of nights, Tammy, I don't remember, four or five nights, maybe out of the week, the kids and I would go to bed together and I would read them from Mother Goose book. 
And, and then I would read a Bible. They, they have these children Bibles that are really cool and pictures and stuff that, you know, keep you awake when you're reading at night. And, and I would read it to my kids. I had no idea how important it would be for them. I had no idea that it was going to um, lead them eventually perhaps into full-time ministry, in which they both are doing today. Folks, grandparents, if, you're, if your children aren't finding the time if, if, with, their, with your grandkids, then we as grandparents, we are to be like Lois was to Timothy, right? We need to, we need to fill that gap. If we don't do it, don't expect, it, don't expect school to do it. And, and don't expect the neighbors to do it. Don't expect the sporting events to do it. Don't expect the dance classes to do it. They don't usually open up these, these things with scriptures and prayers. Folks, we have to do it at home. We don't do it at home. We, you can forget all the bases, all the bases. You want to do a home run, you have to start out with, with, with teaching and reading the word of God with our kids and grandkids. That is something that never is outdated, that uh, uh, should never uh, go off of our schedules or our level of commitment. The, we're going to be having, starting mid September, September 19th, by the way, is a great time of celebration coming back. And I hope, I hope ever, all of us come back just to celebrate the fellowship that we have here. But also, it's not just coming back to the church. It's, it's about a fresh start. It's about getting back in the Word of God, the fellowship of God, and worship of God, getting connected with each other. Find a Bible study group. Find a life group. Find a class where you can read the Bible and share among yourself. It's amazing how much your neighbors know and they give pieces of, 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 of God's word that maybe you don't fully understand. Uh, yesterday, we had a group of ladies here in the bistro, the gathering place. They're getting ready for a community-wide uh, 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 Bible study here in this facility right here on Wednesday mornings uh, after September the 19th. I don't know, what is that, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, I think it is. Anyway, so there's going to be a major Bible study movement going on here. Please do not miss the opportunity if if, if you uh, are able to meet. It's in the morning, so those who are employed will have to find another time. But those of us who are working evenings or those of us who retire, there's going to be a lot of Bible studying going on here. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for loving us so much uh, that you allow your son to die on the cross, that we would be forgiven of our sins and be given the newness of life where your spirit is within us. Thank you so much, Lord, that you would love us, to give us the word that we can actually read it and see, Lord, how it's to guide us to your ways and to be closer to you and to understand you and to understand ourselves as well. Protect us from deception and false doctrine. Teach us what is holy and honorable in your name. Let us hold on to your word, Lord, that it would be the light onto our path, that we would walk with you and in your holy ways and be thoroughly equipped for every good work in your, uh, in your kingdom. To your glory, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dale. And now let us respond in song, so please stand and worship with us. Before we start, I want to thank Jim for sharing his testimony today. Um, so often we, well, I, you know, I take for granted physical health, mental health, emotional health of myself and even my family um, and the people around us. And, and we, you know, I'm not doing anything to you know, get blessings from God, right? To not have any diseases or anything like that. We just, we're just blessed by him and, and God protects us and he's always watching over us whether we want to, um, whether, we, whether we want it or not. He's always around us. And so um, I want to thank you, Jim, for sharing that and helping us remember that. You are Right in the darkness, my God. 
are here touching every heart I worship you I worship you you are here healing every heart I worship you Lord I worship you in every heart I worship you without it. It's the life given to us by God himself that we would not be a part of being lost in the dark world. Be blessed. Know his promises. Know his truth. Know his love. My brothers and sisters, let us go now and share what God has given to us. Amen. Amen. You are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. See you working. 